So our next speaker is uh, Professor Mamo, and he'll tell us about mathematical structure of Schwinger's quantum mechanics. Well, now that we have solved at least this uh, communication problem, you know that uh, I could not be there in person because uh, the embassy here refused to issue the visa for me because I did not have uh, the clearance of the Minister of Exterior Affairs. Anyhow, I am happy to be here and to celebrate along with you uh, Baal's birthday. I must say that I first met Baal some um, thing more than uh, half a century ago. It was 1970. At that time, I was writing my Laurea thesis, but my advisor went to Dubna, so he was not around. In the, when we, he came back, he said that uh, he could not deal with the, what I had prepared, which was something on extension of Lee groups. And so Baal saved me by suggesting that I could write a cohomological approach to projective unitary representation of the Galilei group and the Poincaré group. And actually, because for the representation, for the extension, you have to use the automorphic group of the Galilei group. That was my first paper, which I co-authored with George Whiston, who was visiting was postdoc here. Uh, <clears throat> since then, with Baal, we have collaborated on over more than 50 papers. We have written three books together. And obviously, uh, in all these years, as you can say, uh, more than 50 years, it's clear that it's like a family. So we are uh, the Italian branch of the family of Baal. Uh, now, let, let me say something about the collaboration. The work I am talking on is, has been carried on with uh, Florio Ciaglia, Fabio Di Cosmo, Alberto Ivor, Luca Schiavone, and uh, <clears throat> Alessandro Gambini. Now, because we only have a limited amount of time, let me say what is the main message of what I'm going to uh, Schwinger uh, started, uh, let me give you a brief history of uh, his approach to quantum mechanics. Uh, he was teaching uh, quantum mechanics in Harvard in the 1950s. And he gave a course at Lesouch Summer School in 1955. And uh, notes appeared in a book format in 1971, and they were reissued in 1991. He had also been lecturing uh, at UCLA in the 90s when he moved from Harvard to Los Angeles. And uh, the notes were given to Bert Angler, uh, who edited the book, and the book appeared posthumously in, um, in 2000. Uh, this edition has a, a very informative prologue of 25 pages where the philosophical attitude of Schwinger appears entirely. It is based on the transcript of a public lecture that Schwinger delivered in the early 60s. Now, a, in this, uh, in the previous reissued uh, version, what Schwinger did, he said, the only thing I have done is to change the notation from MA prime A to A prime A, as you see here. Can you see by mouse or not? Well, uh, and then eventually he gave this format. I, can you hear me? 
Yes, yes. Pepe, we can ah, hear thank you. you. Okay, okay. So, <clears throat> he, what he did, he changed the notation of a measurement symbol and uh, in the 60s, he published a few notes on uh, On the proceedings of National Academy of Science, he decided to publish the National Academy of Science because being a member of the Academy, his papers would not be sent out to referees and would be published directly here. So the idea uh, of Schwinger was that uh, all the conceptual setting of uh, uh, quantum mechanics from uh, the algebraic point of view can be completely understood with the standard Gerlach type of experiment. And actually, what you read here is exactly what he wrote. That is, standard Gerlach type of experiment accomplishes a self-contained physical and mathematical development of the general structure of quantum kinematics. And the, you are, uh, all of you are uh, familiar with this uh, simple uh, example, what is being uh, uh, given here, which is a uh, silver, uh, atoms which are being collimated and then they are sent through a <clears throat> magnet and uh, you have the usual up and down part of the speed, so spin up and spin down. Uh, next slide, please. Now you see, if you perform successive Sten Gallag measurements, what happens is that you can uh, actually uh, select up atoms and lower atoms and so you have uh, you construct in this way an up selector and a down selector uh, next slide please if you now use a, a homogeneous magnetic field uh, then uh, you can essentially via Precession, you can flip, and so you go from uh, whatever uh, schematized here from uh, an up atom to a down atom. So you have now uh, two selectors and two flippers. Next slide, please. So you see that if we represent up atoms and down atoms, by unitary vectors, the four uh, uh, SG Stengelak measurements may be described by the action of uh, these uh, four matrices. You see that the, the first two are uh, selectors, while uh, the last two matrices are uh, the flipping. So, if you now look at the composition of these uh, matrices, they close on what is called the group point. So, in this respect, a group point comes out directly as a, <clears throat> a representation of the uh, spin a Stan Gerlach experiment for uh, spin one half, which I have shown to you. Now, usually, a schematic representation of uh, a two group point, let's say, is uh, the arrows which you can see here, and uh, so the arrows connecting one to the others are uh, what uh, I have called the, the flippers. And uh, the other two are the selectors. Next slide, please.
So now you, you see here that, uh, no, no, the previous one, please. Okay. Now, this is another instance of groupoid. This is a, a, a Grotian 10 scheme in spectroscopy. In particular, this one is for lithium atom. Now, let me say that uh, uh, the mathematical structure was not identified by Schwinger, by Schwinger as a groupoid, but uh, he immediately says that you can uh, deal with the linear composition of measurement symbols. And therefore, obviously, he goes immediately to the groupoid algebra rather than uh, to stick with the groupoid, which we have seen associated with uh, Stan Gerlach measurements. Now, <clears throat> the transition from the groupoid to the groupoid algebra erases the specificity of the groupoid. And uh, this is true, obviously, because different groupoids may give rise to the same groupoid algebra. By the way, also at the spectroscopic level, uh, what uh, Heisenberg did was uh, again to represent the groupoid. However, because Born and Jordan knew matrix algebra, they decided to translate into a product of the so called uh, uh, matrix algebra representation of quantum mechanics. And uh, <clears throat> obviously, the groupoid again disappear from the picture. So in both cases, what happened was that even though the experiment would give the structure, would give you immediately the structure of a groupoid, the way people at that time considered the groupoid was via the groupoid algebra. So the groupoid was uh, essentially removed from the picture. However, one thing remained in both pictures. Uh, this was actually what Born was stressing, that the main uh, uh, relevance or the main difference between uh, classical and quantum mechanics was that quantum mechanics was actually dealing with the transition quantities. So, now, from our point of view, it's clear transition quantities are two-point functions. And obviously, what happens is that the elements of a groupoid are indeed related to two-point. So, uh, next slide, please. Uh, before uh, I go on to move uh, to more formal aspects, uh, I would like to make a remark that uh, one of the most important contributions to mathematics of the last century was to notice that it is possible to study mathematical structure per se without realization or representation or identification of symbols with physical property. This remark trivial as it may appear, should be always present when mathematical structures are being used in theoretical physics. Mathematical modeling is extremely valuable to ensure the coherence of what is being elaborated, especially in dealing with quantum phenomena where uh, uh, the intuition is not very useful because phenomena are uh, often very counterintuitive. Intuitive. Now, next slide, please. My, my favorite example to illustrate previous remarks is provided by the Eisenberg Weil algebra. You see, at the mathematical level, the Eisenberg Weil algebra is simply a three dimensional uh, vector space with the commutation relation that you can see here. From uh, this vector space, you may construct the dual space, the tensors, the antisymmetric tensor, and uh, the antisymmetric 
forms and uh, on this star a dual basis would be given by forms which uh, uh, are characterized by the formula that you see here. This is Cartan description of uh, LE algebra. Now, at this abstract level, you can uh, develop an exterior differential calculus uh, at a pure al algebraic level, and then application of this algebraic uh, differential calculus was used in the PhD thesis of Gianni Lanti applying to gauge theory and relativity. Uh, next, please. Now you see what happens with different realization of the isenberg weil algebra. You, if you realize it with Poisson bracket, you get classical Hamiltonian mechanics. If you realize with d by dx, x and one, you get differential operators, therefore partial differential equation and the wave equation. If you realize as a per point three, you get wave mechanics. If you realize in terms of matrices, you get the matrix mechanics, but you can realize in terms of creation and annihilation operators, so you go to quantum field theory. If you take the dual point of view, you get a contact structure, which may be used to describe dissipation and thermodynamics. So the point is that all the abstract construction that uh, I performed earlier, they can be carried over to the realization that we have given. However, if you work with the realization, what happens is that uh, there are additional properties which are spurious, which do not belong to the uh, initial problem. So this is to say, please, the next slide. Uh, uh, this is another instructive example that uh, I would like to give where the identification with the physical variables give rise to different physical systems. This was actually considered this uh, book with Balachandran, Alstern, and Bosturas Kagerstam. You can see, if you write the Poisson bracket, which I have written there, if you identify position and momentum in one way, then you describe the electron monopole system. But if you make a different identification, you describe a massless spinning particle. So again, this is to say that the mathematics is extremely useful. However, to talk about physical system, you need to perform the identification of physical variables. Having said this, let's go back now to groupoids. Uh, and uh, when uh, you go to groupoids, obviously the literature now is quite uh, vast. However, there is a, a nice book which has been written by two physicists, Alberto Ibort and uh, Miguel Ángel Rodríguez. And here, actually, there is a chapter where you can uh, uh, find most of what I am going to say here from the point of view of mathematics. Now, what is a groupoid? Well, a groupoid in uh, categorical terms would be simply be a small category where each morphism is invertible. Now, I don't know how much this definition would appeal to a theoretical physicist. But in any case, you can think of a groupoid as two sets, one uh, which is the set G and the other is set omega. Now, going to our uh, previous pictures, it's clear the set G is the set of transitions. The set omega is the set of uh, the initial and the final uh, uh, states, for instance, in the spectroscopy uh, diagram, or uh, the uh, state vectors, we would say. 
And so what happens is that for each transition, you can define two maps, one uh, which associate to the transition the initial point, and the other which associate to the transition the final point. These are called the source and target. And uh, essentially, when uh, composition you have seen in the spectroscopic diagram that not all transition can be composed, but when the composition is possible, what happens is that you get uh, an associative structure. So roughly speaking, a group point is uh, a generalized group, and uh, the identity is uh, replaced by unit morphism at each point. And so you have a situation where the group point, being a set of uh, transition, contains also transition which do not uh, correspond to going from one state to another, but remain with the same state. And so in this sense, this will be the new unit, and you have as many units as the element of the space omega. Next slide, please. Now you can see that uh, you can use the these two target and the source maps, and you can define uh, morphism, which will land, or if you think of them as arrows, Errors which will originate from X or errors which will terminate in X. And so, uh, roughly speaking, starting from here, you can uh, mimic all the properties and all the definition that you can give for a group. In particular, by requiring differentiability properties for the G and omega, in the maps, you get Lie groupoids. If you require continuity and topological properties, then you get uh, topological groupoid. If you put measures on the two spaces, you get uh, measurable groupoid and so on. You can uh, simply, by making appropriate requirement, you can generalize the groupoid to the category of uh, other spaces. Next, please. So for Lie groups, you have Lie algebras. For Lie groupoids, you have Lie algebraids. And uh, if you consider the case of a pair groupoid, that is when you simply have two copies of the same manifold, the, this is a Lie groupoid. And the Lie algebraid is the tangent bundle. Now, if you consider the dual bundle, obviously you get the phase space. And it's clear then that uh, classical physics can be formulated on Lie algebraids and uh, you recover whatever you can uh, do at the classical level directly on the, at the level of Lie yeah, algebraids and therefore of Lie groupoids. Next, please. Uh, now, let me go back to the... Uh, picture of uh, Schwinger uh, so that uh, we can try to go we had some problems so the uh, it is interesting in a sense that uh, uh, Schwinger as I stressed already decide to present everything with uh, what he called simplified physical system and he introduces compatible uh, uh, quantities, and the definition is that uh, they do not destroy the knowledge that you get by prior uh, measurement of the other. A, complex, a complete set is a set where uh, if there is any other uh, properties which is uh, compatible, then it must be a function of A1, A2, AK. And this state is simply the maximum knowledge that you can get by a complete selective measurement. So you see, this assumption 
are enough to characterize essentially what uh, in operator language we would say a maximal set of commuting operators and the uh, idea of uh, identifying state is uh, via preparation method what uh, in my Stan Gerlach experiment was uh, the collimators and then obviously you have the selection the selective measurement will uh, produce states which were up or down. So, in a sense, uh, whatever uh, Schwinger does is, uh, <clears throat> is clear, he has in mind the Stan Gerlach type of experiment. Next, please. Now, <clears throat> uh, by using the uh, expression in terms of uh, bra and cat, the symbols, the measurement symbols of uh, Schwinger have the form which I have written here, that is with a, a bra and a cat. Now, <clears throat> it's clear that the composition can be defined either on the left or uh, on the right. Usually, Schwinger uh, used to prefer the left action. And uh, if you take the full set of this transition and you organize in a matrix form, next please, uh, you see you get uh, a, a matrix which is associated with uh, a, a groupoid. Uh, each element, each entry is uh, a rank one uh, operator in our language. So the errors now may be thought of uh, connecting AK with AJ. And uh, similarly, so now you see, you can from here uh, visualize immediately what is the inverse of the target map and the inverse of the source map. But they will be uh, rows or uh, columns and uh, there is clearly a, an immersion, a canonical immersion of uh, the object, let's say, into the morphism. Now, here one uh, should make a, a comment because it's clear this is an effect of what I said earlier, that having used the notation in terms of bra and cat, it seems natural that uh, a measurement symbol gives you uh, bra vectors and vector ve uh, vector uh, and uh, cat uh, vectors. However, as uh, Schwinger himself writes, he says a jump step forward has been made by viewing each measurement as a product of two symbols of a new type. One uh, which is uh, a bra and the other which is a cat. However, it's clear that they are distinct type of vectors because one symbolizes a creation act while the other one symbolizes a destruction act. Now, it's clear that uh, what he has done is simply uh, played with the notation and has been able to go to the Hilbert space on which this object may be represented, essentially without uh, <clears throat> paying very much attention. Now we know that uh, there would be a possibility to make this rigorous either by using GNS construction or by using what is called the fundamental representation of the group point. In any case, you see here the danger of uh, introducing a given uh, notation or a given additional structure through the representation. That is, it's clear that at the level of uh, groupoid, there are no vectors. You have to define them properly 
in one way or the other. Uh, next, please. Now, what I will do next is to give you uh, another, please, next slide, please. May I have a next? Ah, okay. You, you see, this is another notion. This is very much as we constructed the tensor spaces on um, the Lie algebra, the Eisenberg Weil algebra, which I gave. You can construct what are called the two group points. And essentially, you take now all the elements of previous one and you make them to be the element of the to be the object and so now you construct transition from one object to the other now you can see immediately that this is needed when uh, you consider uh, uh, generalized states in for quantum system indeed the, the transition from one to the other here they are called the channels and next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, <clears throat> the if you select a different complete set of compatible physical quantities, then you get a different groupoid, which may be represented uh, BJ, BK, uh, the way I have written here. And so you have a new morphisms. And uh, it is possible clearly to go from uh, an A representation to a B representation by means of unitary transformation. Now, putting together the group points associated with different uh, comp complete set of uh, compatible physical quantity is necessary to uh, write the evolution. And uh, this essentially gives you a new groupoid. You see, the previous groupoid essentially uh, rely on a maximal set of commuting observables. So this means that inside what we could call the groupoid algebra, you select from the beginning a ab maximal abelian subalgebra. And uh, a groupoid in this respect contains not only all uh, the observables, but also a choice of a maximal abelian subalgebra, which is what you need to make the measurement. Uh, next, please. Professor, you have uh, three to five minutes left. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we lost some time, but I can uh, interrupt at any time. Uh, now, you see, if you want to describe a physical system, you you have to introduce state observables and the probability function. Next, please. Next slide. Okay. So, in the case of uh, the Stan Gerlach experiment, it's clear we have uh, this uh, abstract groupoid written in terms of uh, vectors. And uh, now, by selecting maximal abelian subalgebra, you can go to different representation. Uh, next, please. You see, this would be concrete realization of uh, the different groupoid. And now you see that uh, they are associated with sigma 3, sigma 1, sigma 2, and the other with the, what we could call a combination with uh, a normalized vector so that you can act transitively on all these different choices by using the rotation group. Uh, next, please. Now, <clears throat> to implement the dynamics, you need to introduce what is called an action group point, which is a quite general uh, notion. And essentially, you define a group point by using a group which acts on a set plus two copies of the set. Uh, you, you can see how you can um, see the definition here. And now that you have an action group point, it's clear the dynamics can be written on uh, the action group point. 
Now, I will simply, just to show how general and how useful is the notion of groupoid, show you how the groupoid emerges naturally if you go from probabilities to probability amplitudes. Uh, next, please. You see, uh, usually we have uh, on any measure space, if you take the wave function, you construct a probability measure. In discrete cases, you have uh, the square root of the probability in terms of uh, an amplitude and the phase. But if you now consider a quantum formulation of classical probability vectors, you would associate with every probability vectors the operator that you see here. Now, to consider the square root, obviously we have to take the square root of each element, uh, which is what we call the identified with the classical, because they are associated with a maximal set of commuting uh, operators. Uh, next, please. Now, you see, I have written in uh, a matrix form so that uh, by taking the square root of uh, each one of the elements of uh, these uh, diagonal matrix, you get the matrix downstairs. And so the square root of the diagonal matrix in terms of operators, let's say, gives you exactly the groupoid. So, uh, Again, the groupoid in a natural way represents the square root of uh, the quantum representation of a classical uh, uh, probability operator probability vector. Uh, next, please. You see, there are uh, other ways to consider the square root to go from probabilities to probability amplitude. And in this way, you consider the unitary group. And uh, this was uh, used by uh, Azure, Faki, and myself to deal with topological order and uh, mixed states and open system. Uh, next, please. Uh, so now, having put uh, groupoids in matrix form, of course, you can, as I said, generate the groupoid algebra, but you can also generate a star algebra in terms of convolution product. The two algebras are uh, isomorphic and uh, obviously having recovered a star algebra from the groupoid, it's clear that the groupoid formulation is fully equivalent to the usual one in terms of sister algebras or in terms of Hilbert spaces. Uh, I did not have time to, I, I had not planned to actually deal with uh, evolution, uh, even though the action principle elaborated by Schwinger is quite a, an important contribution of uh, uh, Schwinger, but uh, you, you have to wait for that. Now, um, the extension to continuous spectra or to field theories, you will have to wait for the talk by Fabio Di Cosmo and Alberto Ivor, uh, which is what is written in next slide. And uh, uh, I conclude here. Happy birthday, Bal, and I hope to see you very soon. Thank you very much. That's it. Uh, are there any questions for Professor Mamo? We are running late, but we can take a few questions. Okay, if there are no immediate questions, let's thank Professor Marmo again. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.